everyone. So today we're going to go over very simple JSON Web Token authentication in a GraphQL Nest.js server. And to do this, I'm going to be using the same Space Explorer project that we created in the last video. And inside the user module, I've already generated a resolver and service. And for this project, we're going to need a database. I just created a simple Docker Compose file for us to use Postgres. So now I'm going to spin up the Postgres server and then we're not really going to touch it. Uh, it's nothing too crazy. So if you have a regular Postgres server installed on your machine, you won't have to, you can skip this step. Dash D. And once that's installed, we're going to need to add a couple of packages. So then we can get started and create our user entity. We're going to need to update our app module so that it connects to Typeform. So in the imports array, we're going to add Typeform. And we're going to use the dot for root method so that I use the automatic configuration. For the automatic configuration to work, we're going to need a new file called ormconfig.json and that's going to go into the root of our project. And let's open that up. And these are some defaults that we're going to use. The important note here is that the entities array, we're specifically listening to the generated .js files after it's compiled and not the TypeScript files. So I'm going to put the entity inside of the user module and it's just going to be named user.entity.ts. Now before we define the user entity, we should define the GraphQL schema for it. The user type is going to be very simple. Right now it's only going to have the email property on it. We're also going to need a mutation type. And in GraphQL, a mutation is basically any query type that changes data. And the reason why we're creating login as a mutation is that we're going to create a user or log in as a user. And finally, we're going to need a query type that's called me. And this is just going to check if the user is already logged in or not. With that out of the way, we can now create a user entity that matches this user type. So we know we need an ID as well as a string. And then to connect to a type one, we're going to need to extend from base entity, use the entity decorator. Now, just as convention, I like to have the data in the database to be a plural version of the table name. And since we're using a SQL database, these are going to be columns. And I just like having UUIDs as the primary key column. And email is going to be text, of course. Uh, make sure you import these. And I guess we don't need any imports from the NestJS module, so that's cool. Now we're going to make this available in our user module by going to the user module. Uh, create a imports array and we're going to be importing type one module here and this time we're going to be using the for feature method and passing in an array of all the entities that we're going to be using for us that'll be just the user entity and i'm just gonna make a space here just because now we can go into our user service and i'm just going to create a constructor here and what you're going to want to do is to inject the repository for the user entity and that will just allow the service to talk to our database, specifically for the user entity. Now with the user repo, we can just do the normal type form stuff where we create and find the current user or the specific user by their email. And then with the service, we can inject it into our user resolver through the constructor and we can finally use it for login. If we take a look at our mutation schema, we have an argument of email and that's what we're going to use in our resolver. And before we get to real authentication stuff, this is going to be the logic of logging in. If the user already exists, we're going to get them by their email. And if they don't, we're going to create the user there. For now, we're going to return the user, but we need to actually change this to a JSON web token. And for that, we're going to need to install JSON web token. So I'm going to do yarn, add JSON web token, and clear. And since JSON web token is a JavaScript module, we're going to also have to add the types so then we can work with it easily. So I think the best place to use JSON Web Tokens would be the service. And here I'm going to create a new method called create token. This method's going to accept a user of type user entity. And here we're going to use JSON Web Token to sign that user. And then we also have to send in a secret. Now, best practice says that you should probably make your secrets into an environment variable or a configuration or something. But definitely hide it from your GitHub repository. But since this is a toy project, I'm just going to do secret here. We're going to want to return this. And then also, uh, JSON Web Token can only sign a plain object. 
a user entity is not a plain object. It has methods on it, and it's a class. So what I'm going to do is just destructure ID and email here, and use that as the payload. This way, in our resolver, instead of returning the user, we could return the token using create token from our user service. So, so far, we don't have authentication set up, but we have enough set up that we could test this in the browser. So I'm going to start the server now. And once that's up, you can open up your browser and go to the GraphQL playground at localhost 3000 slash GraphQL. And here we're going to write a mutation of login. And I'm just going to use the email of my at gmail.com and play. And there's our token. Now we're going to work on actual authentication. So to use this token, we're going to add it to the HTTP headers. We're going to make a little object here called, we're passing in an authorization with the value of bearer and then the token, which is absolutely huge. Now just to prove that the me query doesn't, ex or it's going to fail, we'll just do ID and email. This is me instead of ma. And we'll get null. And this is what we're going to mainly work on. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is go to our app module. And we're going to add another option to our GraphQL module. And this is where we're going to get the HTTP request and add it to the GraphQL context under headers. That way the GraphQL execution context has access to the HTTP request. And now I'm going to make a new file in users called auth.guard.ts. Oh, I added an S on accident. Now the auth guard is going to be an injectable, which comes from Nest.js common, and it's going to implement the interface of can activate, which will give it the method of can activate, where Nest.js will give us the execution context. But we actually want the GraphQL context, so, so we're going to make a new variable called CTX and use the GTO execution context class to create it. I'm also going to make another method called validate token. So we can parse through the authorization field and check the token that we send in. And to validate the token, we're going to need to import JSON web tokens, which means both of these methods have to be async now. So first we're going to check the auth string, make sure that it's a bearer token. So we're going to check explicitly that the first part is bearer and then assign the second part as the token. And then we're just going to throw errors if either case is wrong. And if it's correct, we're going to just return the verified token or the token verification. It's just a boolean. I believe I have to await here, but we will find out. And then we'll use that method inside of can activate and then attach the user to the context. This way we can go back to the resolver and we're going to add the query for me and we're going to grab the user from the context with the attribute of user, which is of type user because that's the payload that we added. And we'll just return user. And I think that's everything that we need for our, so let's start our server and go to, back to our playground. And all we really need to do is press play. Oh, right. I forgot something. We actually need to use that guard. So we're going to use guards here. New auth guard. All right, let's fix our imports. And now we should get our user back. And there we are. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And... I'll see you guys next time.